Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I want to switch things up a little bit and maybe get a little philosophical on you. And perhaps by the end of this video, you just might even change the way that you think about your training. I've been training for well over 20 years and I can't tell you the number of times I've had someone, complete strangers even, come right up to me and tell me what it was that I should be doing. You should be doing aerobics, maybe karate. It's CrossFit, bro. HIT training is where it's at. Are you insane? You're not doing insanity? Or, no, no, yoga is the source, my friend. And breathe and find your center with Tai Chi. Over the years, trust me, there's no shortage of people telling me what it was that I should be doing. Though it seemed that all these good-intentioned people had completely different ideas of what it was I should be doing. There are also many people that have told me what I should be eating. Oh, oh, you need to load up on carbs for energy. Oh, and then on the other hand, what? Are you crazy? You're eating carbs? Carbs are the devil. Shh, Lucifer invented carbs. Or trust me, bro, trust me, it's acai berries. That's what you need to get you ripped. And of course, I had people telling me where I should be training. At the park, or at home, or at the gym, maybe the tennis court, or the basketball court, in the boxing ring, cross-country skiing, maybe in the pool, or climbing up mountains. There's also the people telling you when I should train. Oh, you have to train on an empty stomach to get those abs. Or training first thing in the morning is when you have the most energy. Or others would say, no, 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 no. Your system is fully awake and primed right after supper. That same thing went for when I should eat. You need to eat protein right before training. It should be right after training. You need to eat eight meals a day every few hours. And hey, whatever you do, you never, ever eat after 7 p.m. Haven't you seen the movie Gremlins? Then there is always the people telling me who I should train with or who I should listen to. Hey, my personal trainer is 5'8", 305 and jacked. He's got 5% body fat, bro, 5%. You gotta listen to him. You gotta listen to him. And he's all natural, all natural. Or you should go see my chiropractor and he's gonna recommend a pillow fighting routine that's super intense, but it's safe and cuddly. So I had all of these people telling me and focusing on who, what, where, and when I should train. But you will find the most intriguing question in all of life is usually the why. And it seems for the most part, I often heard this question in the same context. Why am I not ripped after three weeks like my trainer said I would be? I ate the eight meals, I spent six hours in the sauna, I've been on a cleanse for two weeks, why am I not ripped? And when it comes to training, I guess you could break the question of why into two subcategories. Most people have their macrocosmic question of why. Why do you train at all? For example, I love to do stuff. From playing sports, to climbing, to riding motorcycles, skydiving, swimming, whatever it is, I'm always game. And being fit makes all of that so much easier. And maybe you have the same goals as I. Or maybe you just want to look great in those new pair of jeans. Or you want to hit the beach next summer looking like a Greek sculpture. Or maybe you want to live to be 150 years old. Whatever it is, most people have a vague idea of their overall reason of why. But it's the microcosmic reason of why that most people never pay attention to. Like, why, if I, like most people, only have about 45 minutes, three days a week to train, why am I doing all of these accessory exercises? Now, don't get me wrong, these exercises do have their place if I was injured or doing some rehab, or if I was really trying to isolate a specific muscle, let's say for the sake of some bodybuilding competition or something. But this brings us to the whole point of this entire video. Now, if my goal was, let's say, to get lean or have better cardio, then why, 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 and why am I choosing all these easy exercises? Or why am I walking if I can jog? Or jogging if I can run? You need to push yourself hard enough to get your body to adapt or lift heavy enough. Basically, you need to work hard enough so that you can see some sort of result. So why am I doing the abductor machine for 30 minutes straight when I could be doing 10 minutes of squats? Because I'm telling you, those 10 minutes of squats are gonna give you a far superior result. And when it comes to the abductor machine, I have people telling me, well, bro, I really feel it burning and working. To which I say, the reason why, bro, is that you're working such a small amount of muscle tissue that it becomes easily fatigued. And if it works so well, then why are your legs not in great shape? And also, why don't you then have stronger legs? And most importantly, why are you not even breathing heavily after doing 40 reps of this exercise? 
And while we're at it, if you're looking to gain new muscle, then why are you even doing 40 reps of anything? Why, why, and why? Okay, I'm sorry for ranting here, I digress. But the next time that you go to the gym, ask yourself, why are you here today? And the answer should be to put in some hard work to achieve your overall goal of why you go to the gym in the first place. So the next time you finish your workout, ask yourself, why are you not sweating? All I'm saying is it might change your perspective on training if you start to ask yourself the question of why. Why are you choosing to do that particular exercise? Well, my buddy Bobby said to do it, but why? Because maybe there are more effective exercises that are much more worthy of your time. And then think of why are you eating the specific foods that you're eating? Why? Or why not push yourself a little bit harder while you're already at the gym? Why not sweat a little more and put in a little hard work? Why not jog next time instead of walk? Or add an incline to make your workout a little bit more challenging? So if you're going to go to the gym, why not maximize your time and your effort while you're there? And you're going to find by doing that that eventually the only question that is lingering in your mind is why you didn't start doing all of this years ago. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe as we're constantly posting a great tips and new ideas that are meant to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible. 